Yesterday was a bittersweet day with the release of the glorious new Tears of the Kingdom trailer. Breath of the Wild is now obsolete. There are so many new additions, changes, gameplay improvements, areas, and story beats that make this a true, genuine sequel and not just a glorified DLC to Breath of the Wild. Tears of the Kingdom isn't just a glorified fan mod. It isn't just a $70 expansion. This is so much more. Today, I don't really want to do the traditional trailer breakdown. What I've done is I've narrowed down a few specific scenes from this week's trailer that really stood out to me and which I really want to absolutely gush about. I'm going to mainly focus on why these new additions are such a huge deal to me as not only a Zelda fan, but also as a fan of video games in general. I'll be focusing mostly on gameplay and exploration in this video because I have a lot of lore and story related video scripts in the works right now, so be on the lookout for those and turn notifications on so you do not miss those videos. Anyways, on with the video. So I did say Breath of the Wild is obsolete, I just wanted to give a quick disclaimer. What I mean by obsolete is from this trailer, you can basically say that Tears of the Kingdom improves on almost everything that Breath of the Wild did and does so much more, adds so much more, and brings so much more to the table. So Breath of the Wild is still a good game, it'll still hold up many many years later, but the definitive open air Zelda experience is with The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. So let's jump into this trailer right now. Let's look at this. Let's look at how many sky islands there are. This... This is a lot. Remember how so many people were saying that, oh, these sky islands are just a minimal addition to the overworld of Breath of the Wild. Just the sky islands in the same overworld? Well, look at how many sky islands there are. And look at the diversity in their size and shape and all the things you can do. You can already see that right when this trailer opens up. So Tears of the Kingdom is really, really building upon that creativity in world design that has already been seen in Breath of the Wild. Look at this. First of all, Hateno Village looks very different. Things are kind of getting back to normal after the calamity. But let, let's see this, there, there's a lot of mushrooms and stuff. This mushroom motif is going around quite a bit. Like this woman over here has got this mushroom hat, mushrooms over here, mushrooms over here, mushrooms over here and here and here. So first of all, that's a major difference between Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom in just one village itself. I don't really know why this mushroom obsession is going on, but there is a lot of changes in Hateno Village, like look at this giant mushroom statue. So like a lot of the interactions and things going on in Hateno Village will be very different. Here, look at this. We got people rebuilding Hyrule Castle Town. Look at these tents. People will probably be lodging and sleeping and camping out here because they're going to be working so hard to rebuild this demolished Hyrule Castle Town after the Calamity and now, of course, after Ganon wakes up. But what's really cool is I think you as Link will have a lot to do with this rebuilding and that's going to be with, of course, your use of your Ultra Hand. We'll see that in the rest of the trailer as well. And along with just you helping out and other residents, I'm sure we'll see Bolson and Hudson and all the other people from Terrytown come back and lend a hand to this rebuilding effort. So that's going to be exciting. So look at this. This area outside what looks to be Kakariko Village looks very different. What the heck is this giant circular rock that's over here? No clue. Also, again, we see these... Zonai Swirly Shrines. No clue what these are. Are these fast travel points? Are they shrines? Do they send you up to the Sky Islands? That's my question. What is going on here? And my point with showing you guys all this is there's so much difference in just the land of Hyrule itself. Hyrule is different and you can tell that there is a time skip with how people are reacting, behaving, how things are not where they used to be, how new things are present in the already existing world. It's great. 
And another massive example of the change within Hyrule itself is this area. This is supposed to be the Typhlo Ruins. Remember the Typhlo Ruins in Breath of the Wild? It was completely pitch black, completely dark. You could not see a single thing. And now look at this. The fog is completely lifted in Tears of the Kingdom. Here's something big. Here's something I'm very happy to see. This looks to be a giant structure coming out from underground. Let's slow this down just a bit. Take a look at this. This seems to be the Gerudo Desert. You got another Zonai Swirly Shrine here. But what is this? I think this could be one thing in particular, and that is a dungeon. I think this is a confirmation that dungeons exist in this game. Ever since before this confirmation right here, this little scene over here, I was still very hesitant. Will dungeons be in the game? Will dungeons not be in the game? Well, look at this. This screams dungeon to me. This screams dungeon. This is a massive, massive structure coming out from the ground. Is it floating up into the sky? I don't think so. I think it's rising out of the ground and into the Gerudo Desert where it will be stationary. You can go inside of it, you can explore this dungeon. Even more, I think this could be our first look at maybe the Arbiter's Grounds in the Gerudo Desert. And to us longtime Zelda fans, especially the fans of Twilight Princess, this is going to be a huge, awesome deal for us. So let's continue watching this trailer. Look at this craters within Gerudo Desert are these quicksand spots where we fall into these pits and go straight into the underground. Like what is causing all of these depressions within the sand? Is it a swarm of angry Molduga who are coming out to like suck Link into the sand? This is this is very cool. I feel like not only the monsters in Hyrule are out to get you, I think the environment itself is going against you in this game, which will be a lot of fun. Quicksand and like sinking sand, giant storms and erupting malice out of Death Mountain. This is very, very, very different from Breath of the Wild. Uh, this is another great shot over here. Let's look at this. This seems to be the underground, but I also think it could be an area inside of Death Mountain's volcano, as we see this lava flowing down over here. But there's a lot of like underground imagery over here. So this could be an underground area. Is this a sec? Is this another dungeon we're approaching? Is Link approaching another dungeon over here inside of Death Mountain? Could it be like a fire temple like we saw in Ocarina of Time, which is hidden deep inside of Death Mountain? Only time will tell. Awesome. Look at this. Look at this. These ships are very interesting. This gives me sand ship vibes. Again, will these ships be dungeons like how they were in Skyward Sword's sand ship? And another thing, are they allies? Are they enemies? A lot of people say this could be a Rito-like design. This does look very Rito, but it also could be Zonai. This, the colors do look Zonai, but I'm very excited for the interactions we have with these flying ships flying ships what are we gonna do with them are we gonna explore inside of them are there are allies to fight whatever is in this giant storm cloud i guess we'll see that very soon as well look at this this is also very cool very new kind of interaction you can do in tears of the kingdom versus what you could do in breath of the wild you know what was interesting is in my live stream i was saying oh there is a game where i felt like we have done this before and someone in my chat was nice enough to remind me that Mario Galaxy did this exact same thing. So think about that, Nintendo is taking inspiration from their other games like Mario Galaxy and incorporating it into Tears of the Kingdom. How awesome is that? And this is a very cool way to explore these sky islands, jumping through these giant water bubbles. That's so amazing. But one more thing I wanted to say about these water bubbles, this here, this right here, this water bubble thing might confirm underwater exploration. Because look at this, Link is jumping in this water and he still has some control over where he's going. So if we can do that within these water bubbles, what about giant actual bodies of water like Lake Hylia or Colomo Lake or any other place within Hyrule where you can just deep dive and swim. That would be really cool. I guess we just need the right armor sets to dive in deep enough. 
another really cool method of traveling exploration and interaction link has this really cool diving suit of course probably inspired by the rito but this has got this kind of mission impossible vibe going on i think this is either going to be like a mini game or like a trial a zonai kind of trial which Link has to overcome to to maybe enter a dungeon, enter a shrine, or enter this very mysterious area. Many people say this is the Yiga hideout. I'm not too sure on that, but I think this whole method of flying is very, very, very cool. This over here seems to be inside of one of those giant spheres, and this looks to be like a Zonai shrine puzzle and I think a lot of these shrine equivalents will be in the sky and for some reason you're turning this around but I'm curious I'm curious what these turquoise orbs are and what purpose they will serve within this puzzle this dial is turning this entire shell of this spherical island orb around and maybe you have to reflect the sun's rays onto this little orb over here, I'm not entirely sure, but this seems to dispense these turquoise orbs out. Not really sure what purpose those serve right now. Also, what's awesome over here is you got this mob of enemies, and you got NPCs helping you out too. I think that's very cool, very dynamic way to get people in Hyrule involved, and just make this world just feel a little more lively than it originally was in Breath of the Wild. So not only are you helping NPCs w when they're encountered by Moblins or Bokoblins or whatever, well, they're helping you out as well on top of that. Look at this. Link's got the Sheikah Slate over here, but it's kind of like that Nintendo Switch look, but also take a look at this. I can pause at the right time. It's connected to this spool of like wiring over here, which is connected to his waist or like attached to his waist. So where is he going right here? I think this elevator is in one of those early towers that we see very early in the trailer. Like one of these towers over here. I think it's shooting Link either up into a tower or down into the underground. But what's interesting, even more interesting, is this is the only kind of Sheikah imagery we are seeing in this game right now. No guardians other than the Sheikah slate and this elevator. No guardians, no Sheikah shrines, no Sheikah towers, no blue flames, any of that. So is this a contraption and invention developed by maybe someone like Robbie or Pura to help Link access new areas that he's never access before like the underground or even just like shoot him up higher into the sky not really sure on that it's kind of confusing but i guess we'll see in due time also i just wanted to remind you guys please hit the like button on this video it really helps out by boosting this video and getting it in front of the eyes of so many more people who enjoy and are excited for tears of the kingdom and zelda content thank you so much and let's continue on with the video this, I am very convinced that this is inside of a dungeon, and this is a dungeon boss. This area looks to be inside of a very dark and mysterious dungeon, with these this foliage over here, with this Zonai light, and of course this is a massive construct. This looks to be a giant boss, and what I'm very excited for Tears of the Kingdom to bring back are dungeon bosses. Give me dungeon bosses. We've seen a lot of overworld bosses, of course, in Breath of the Wild and this trailer. I'm really hoping this is a legit dungeon boss. A dungeon boss you fight at the end of a long and exhausting dungeon. And how awesome is this fusion? Fusion of a royal sword and a royal shield. And th this is very creative because the thing about the shields is you can use them to shield bash or shield parry. And what's awesome is Link can not only do that with the with the shields, but he can also do that with the swords now. So I thought that was a very cool combination he's got going on. He's doing that parry over there. And looks like Teba's son is helping us out over here. Teba's son, Tulin. And this is very interesting. This is in the Stormy Heba region, jumping off a giant trampoline. And we got these ships over here. 
So what's what's the deal over here? Is are these the Sky Islands? Is this closer to the ground because it's the Heber region? Not entirely sure, but I'm not. I'm also curious what what role these ships will have to play in this particular part in the story. Also, I wanted to give a shout out to my buddy Yggdrasil because he was, um, if you listen to our um, Tears of the Kingdom uh, is not a $70 DLC podcast, that episode of the EXP podcast I did with Nintendo Vault and Yggdrasil, Yggdrasil kept saying that Ultra Hand is going to be used to create houses and structures and even like horse carriages like this and you can help NPCs in this way, help them by building ho houses, help them by building horse carriages and transport them throughout Hyrule. What an ingenious kind of concept that this game is going and that this game is doing and honestly this gives me a little bit of Red Dead Redemption 2 vibes. I was telling one of my friends who's played Red Dead Redemption 2, I was telling him this gives me Red Dead vibes and he totally agreed with me. Very cool concept over here and I want to see what other interesting side quest ideas come from the use of Ultra Hand. And this is a very cool way to use recall in combat. We've seen it twice now. We've seen recall used in combat with that giant spike ball in the 2021 trailer. And we've also seen recall used in combat right here to recall the Octorox rock back at it. Very, very cool. And here's a very cool use of fuse. So we got this jetpack. This is literally a jetpack. And it's attached to our shield. Kind of like how the Zonai flamethrower was attached to our shield attached to Link's shield through the use of Fuse. But who gives us this jetpack? How do we find this jetpack? And my biggest question is, how can this be used outside of Fusion? Do we just pick this up as a material from our menu and just throw it at enemies and it homes in on enemies? Or I, I'm not entirely sure. I, I'm more curious how this jetpack and rocket is going to be used outside of combat and outside of Fusion. Because we're already seeing Link use it to gain new heights without the use of Ascend because he doesn't have a ceiling to latch onto over here. This is also very cool. This also gives me Mario Galaxy vibes because this is, these are like anti-gravity platforms which make you a little floatier. So it also, yeah, it gives me very much Mario Galaxy vibes. So this looks like kind of like a shrine-like puzzle. You go all the way over here, you go across these water bubbles you might come across over here, jump on these anti-gravity platforms by activating them back here. It's a very cool kind of like platforming puzzle we got going on here. And it's very, very, and it's a very different approach to accessing new heights than what we have seen in Breath of the Wild. And another really cool thing is look at the stacked islands over here. I'm excited to see why these islands are stacked and if we can go higher and higher and higher. I wonder how high we can go in this game. And also we got a nice good look of Malice Death Mountain right in front of us. Here's a really good look at the underground because look at this. This same rock, we saw the same kind of rock in the last trailer where Link was shield surfing on the grind rails of Death Mountain, we saw the same kind of rock. I think it's like a malice kind of rock. I think if we break it open, we can get some like malice energy, malice core, some other cool stuff to fuse with. And look at this cool minecart ride. And not only is it a minecart ride, this looks to be, yep, we see it, Ultra Hand creation, Ultra Hand creation. So Link seems to have created both of these minecarts because both of them have Ultra Hand goo on them. And what is this guy doing here? Is he just training with us? What's going on? But the but the biggest thing out of this footage over here is this looks to be a similar area to this area over here because we see lava flowing down. But what's even cooler is if we look out in the distance, we can see the underground explorable area that we saw in the last trailer. And look at that. We see this. 
we see that mushroom tree we see that bulbous mushroom tree whatever that is and that tells us that we are indeed in the underground and the underground is vast the underground is big and the underground is going to be great it's going to be so much fun to explore and look at this let me preface this by saying in my tears of the kingdom gameplay demonstration breakdown i was saying that not only will we be able to make vehicles we can make contraptions so i consider this more of a contraption than a vehicle of course it has wheels but look at this arm this is like a mech almost that we've created ourselves as Link to fight against a stone talus. I don't really know exactly what kind of weapon or method of damage this thing is. It looks like some kind of like lightning bolt or needle. But imagine instead of this arm, we had an entire gigantic arm cannon with cannonballs that can knock the stone talus over. How cool would that be? And I'm very curious to see how Link or us as the player can control these ultra hand contraptions and a lot of zelda theorists after we saw the full extent of what fuse could do were right because the, a lot of zelda theorists were saying imagine if you can fuse rubies to your arrows and make the ultimate powerful ice arrows and look that's what's happening right here another ultra hand contraption and this one is very cool because look at this this has this kind of battery over here. This battery looks to be the same battery that was used in Link's car that we saw in the first 2023 trailer, our first look at Ultra Hand. And this same kind of battery is powering this contraption. And what's the most interesting to me is Link, or us as the player, seems to have created this outside of this kind of camp put it on top of this camp or this structure and now outside of this camp structure we're activating it and the lasers are going crazy and it's like an awesome AoE very very interesting way of attacking also one quick observation I just found is looks like this block over here it looks very similar to these anti-gravity blocks just a very interesting observation looks very similar to these anti-gravity blocks so I wouldn't be surprised if we can ultra hand these for future creations. And look at this. This is the mystery of the giant Hebra storm. So is this what all those Rito ships are coming out to fight against? So we got Mr. Tulin over here, Teba's son. We got us Link over here with a new kind of outfit. How are we going to fight this thing? If it's a sky battle, then I really hope that the sky combat in this game is very tight and very fun. And it would be fun if we see more sky bosses in this game than just this enemy. Look at this. So this is very interesting. Riju does this little kind of dance, similar to Orbosa's Fury. This makes me think that maybe some of the champion abilities will be back in this game, but taking on a very different form. And ah, look at this. This is awesome. You are not alone. You are not alone, yes. We have allies in this game. To those of you who have played God of War or God of War Ragnarok, specifically God of War Ragnarok, think about this. I want to equate this game to God of War Ragnarok for a bit. Because, spoilers for Ragnarok, by the way. I just want to give that quick disclaimer. But before you're about to go into the final battle against Odin and Asgard, you have so many allies. You have Kratos, you have your son, Atreus. You have Freya, a companion and friend. You have Freya's brother, Freyr. You have your bobblehead, Mimir. And you have so many other friends and companions. You even have the Valkyries on your side, like Sigrun, one of the major Valkyrie allies, is on your side to fight against Asgard. So look over here, we have Hylians, Gerudo, the champion Link himself. We got Gorons. And we had Riju over here, and now here we have Sidon. And it looks like you can take your allies all the way up to the Sky Islands over here. Because this, this clip with Sidon looks to be in the Sky Islands. But not only in the Sky Islands, this looks very similar to what Zora's Domain would look like if it was in the Sky Islands. So I'm very curious what all of that means. What is going on here? Is this in the past or whatever? I'm focusing on the gameplay right now, but I just think it's really cool that your companions can fight alongside of us. I don't know if this really means multiplayer, but maybe, maybe, I guess we'll see. But it's just really cool that everyone's got their own kind of 
way of attacking and their own attack animations and it might really add a lot to the gameplay and combat of this game, which I'm excited for. Look here are all your allies, Riju, Tulin, Sidon, and here is the Gleok in its full glory. Yes. So yeah, that was my quick little rundown of this trailer. Very quick, very simple, but I just wanted to get across that this game is not just DLC, it is something way more, and there are so many new things that I have pointed out in this trailer today, and so many things that I've probably missed that are not in Breath of the Wild, and that's what I think makes this trailer so good, it is pointing out and highlighting things that you could not do in Breath of the Wild. All the things that, all these highlights that I made and I'm pointing out and talking about, we didn't have companions in Breath of the Wild who fought alongside of us. We didn't have such vast, explorable sky islands. We couldn't dive with a diving suit. We couldn't jump into like anti-gravity water bubbles. We couldn't attach a jetpacks to our shield and launch ourselves skyward. We couldn't create giant rock structure golems and control them and fight alongside them. There's so many cool and amazing things we can do in this game and I'm very, very excited to see how it'll all shape out. So, what did you think? There's a lot of new things that we can do in this game, and I think this trailer is just scratching the surface of all of this. Was there anything that I missed in this rundown or just me gushing about how good this game is? Was there anything I missed? Was there any other cool and amazing new thing that you saw in this trailer that I missed that we could not do in Breath of the Wild? Let me know in the comments below. And of course, if you enjoyed this video, and all the other Zelda and Xenoblade videos I'm making on the road to Tears of the Kingdom and the Xenoblade 3 DLC, be sure to hit that subscribe button and like this video. It helps out a lot. And ring that notification bell to not miss another upload. This is Nishquick signing off. Have a great day and get excited for Tears of the Kingdom. We're just a little less than a month away. I'll see you guys soon. Later.